Hello, I'm Chris, and this is my automotive fusing video. So I have a bunch of wire diagrams, and people always ask me where the fuses go, or you forgot the fuses. So I'm making this video to show you where they are, and where you might think they are, but they are not most of the times. So this is not a test prep lecture video for college students. This is for DIY guys and girls that have a project, usually pre-fuel injected because these older vehicles had smaller alternators. People are upgrading the charging wires, doing engine swaps. They spend a bunch of money and then they're like, man, do we need to fuse this? They go into toxic forums. People are like, oh my God, you need fuses. Those are probably fuse salesmen that go in those forums and brainwash people. All we need to do is look at a vehicle in real life and copy what they do. That's what I've been doing all my life. I don't try to reinvent the wheel. So the first thing we have to understand is what is a circuit and what does short circuit mean? So on the cars and trucks we mess with, 12 volt DC radio, and it's just gonna have some resistance when we wire up to it. Okay, so in the United States, we don't run negative back to the battery. We run it through a conductor, the chassis frame, whatever you wanna do, 12 volts cannot electrocute us, so they just conduct it back to the battery like that. So on the radio, we're gonna run 18 gauge wire. So on the negative side of the circuit, you don't use any fuses, breakers, nothing, absolutely nothing. It just runs just like that. I've had people tell me, I even fuse the grounds. Okay, no you don't, just run it like that. So the positive side of the circuit ran with the same wire. So all we need to know, something's melted in here, burned up. The resistance is gone, so that hot wire is going straight back to the ground. So what's usually going to happen is it's going to heat up in here, burn up, and just shut the radio off. The other common situations we're in here working on the radio, we didn't unhook the battery or anything. We have this hot wire laying around and then it pops the fuse. So what happened was it came in contact with the chassis frame, short circuited, however it did, and it popped the fuse. So if we don't have the fuse on there, this whole wire right here starts to heat up. And it's just a matter of what gives first on this wire and it just chooses a place it just burns in half. Meanwhile, all the insulation is melted off. Everything around it is melted off. So we short out a radio inside on the dash. There's flammable stuff all the way around it. There's insulation, there's styrofoam, plastic dash. All that stuff is going to catch on fire. So anything inside the interior of the vehicle must be fused 100%. No questions asked. And in my videos, I do show everything fused going inside the car. We'll show it again in a second here. Now, Let's say we had the fuse where it was supposed to go. Now this wire starts to heat up. We're short circuiting and it pops the fuse. So on this small circuit, you typically use some kind of mini fuse or blade fuse, whatever. So I just really want you to understand that this wire turns red hot when it short circuits and will catch anything on fire that's around it. So if you have a flammable vehicle, fiberglass running under any type of carpet, anything, plastic, you have to fuse no matter what you're working on all the time. So you have to think of these circuits as layers. This is one of many circuits on the interior circuit. We have a charging circuit, a starter motor circuit, and then an interior circuit. You can have interior one, two, and three. We've seen modern cars that have three fuse boxes. That's all I'm getting at. So when people try to argue me in the comments, I say, get off your butt and go out there and look at a vehicle and you'll find out where they fuse real quick. I've never had anybody reply back to me because you go out there and you see that the factory doesn't fuse these bigger circuits. Let's go look at my 2004 Jeep Wrangler. We're gonna come back in here and draw it. And I'm gonna show you the only thing that's fused under the hood. This is an interior fuse circuit. We will get into that in a little bit. Let's go check it out. So when I tell you to get off your butt and go pop the hood in your car, I'm not being rude, I'm being honest. This is the 2004 Jeep Wrangler. Let's check this out. These two wires right here are added for my winch. So just ignore those two. So we have two six gauge wires right there and we have two six gauge wires right there. Our two six gauge negative or ground wires are going to the engine block right there. You can barely see it, it's gray. And then right there under that harness, bolted to the firewall. So we have two six gauge hot wires coming off, going right here to the main fuse box. Okay. See it's got double screws. And also notice it has a double crimp in there with another wire so this looks like a number eight and this would be used as a fusible link so 
So we got a feasible link. Where do you think this goes? This goes to the starter motor. And then we have this other red one right here with no fuse link on it, nothing at all. Where do you think this one goes? It goes right there to the back of the alternator. No fuse link, nothing at all. So a recap on a factory 2004. No fusing on the battery at all, anywhere. There's no fusing going to the main fuse box either. There is a fuse link to the starter motor, that's it. And absolutely no fuse going to the alternator. All the fusing is done after those two circuits. It starts right here. There's actually wiring going back into the inside of the vehicle and there's another fuse box. Oh my God, what is that? And on these Wranglers, you gotta take this little strap off and the other fuse box is right there. So a 2004 with fuel injection, we have two fuse boxes. So on our 2004 Wrangler, we had two six gauge wires coming off the positive battery terminal. One of them went to the underhood fuse box and there was a fuse link about two or three inches that looked to be an undersized piece of wire. And this went to the starter motor. So remember if this starts to short out somehow, it heats this wire up and that fuse link is the weakest link of this circuit right here. So it's gonna burn that up before it causes any serious damage to anything. So the biggest misconception about fusing is that it's there to save your life. It has nothing to do with your life. Anybody around the house has ever been shocked grabbing a plug or outlet or something? Did the breaker trip? No, it did not trip. It shocked the crap out of you and it would have electrocuted you if the situation was just right. Same thing right here. This is not here to prevent you from getting hurt. It's there to protect expensive circuits from being damaged. And that's why on these older steel vehicles, nothing out here is fused because there's no expensive electrical components. Everything is fused that goes inside the vehicle. The fuse box, we'll get to that in a second here. Now I'm sure on some BMWs or Audis or Lamborghinis, something like that, I'm pretty sure they do have fuses from the factory at the positive battery terminal. So some of these batteries can be 900 co cranking amps. So what are you gonna do? Put a 900 amp fuse right there. That thing would never pop. Typically on some of these higher end cars, and foreign cars, you'll see 150 amp breaker or fuse right here. Study that on your own. There's no vehicle that I own. Even my 2017 Camaro, 2017 Tacoma has absolutely no fuses right here on the battery terminal whatsoever. So one of the things I have observed on later model vehicles is that the battery terminals seem to have like these hollow places in them. Go look at yours. Almost every vehicle I've seen so whenever this thing heats up, it has a weak point right here to melt the terminal. I think that's why they put those flimsy looking terminals. My Camaro has them on there. It's actually what you want on there. And I remember a long time ago, we seen a car that was on fire and he had a fuse right here and the guy was laughing. Oh, he got a fuse on there, it didn't pop, burn his car up. And I was thinking, I was like, that had nothing to do with it. So in the comments, talk about things that you've seen catch cars on fire. My experience, it's only been gas that squirts on the engine bay and gets around this guy right here and instantly catches on fire. I've never seen any of this stuff cause a fire on a vehicle, even on a wreck. I have had these wires short out and the bigger the wire is, it's just like a welder. This thing instantly heats up in a fraction of a second and usually goes and just melts, just like it's being cut with a plasma cutter. And usually, you don't even know what happened. You go into there, you'll see this cable melted or a big chunk like that taken out of your frame or somewhere under the car. So I have a bunch of alternator videos. I don't fuse anything coming off the alternator. That is a car audio thing. This Jeep has no fuses on it. No car that I own has fuses coming off of this alternator. I'm sure there are some out there. Let's just draw the wire like it is on the factory Jeep. So that was the second red wire coming out of the battery terminal going right there. And this was a six gauge as well. Okay, so let's say you wanna fuse that alternator wire. Where do you fuse it, over here or over here? So let's say you wanna run a 150 amp output alternator. What fuse do you buy right there? 150 amp fuse? Well, how in the world are you going to put it in line right there? This stuff right here is very easy to speculate about and very easy for an idiot to comment, oh, you need a fuse right there. But when it comes down to actually fusing right here, sometimes it can be impossible or not even worth it. That's why 
The factory doesn't do it, I don't do it. But if I was in the car audio, absolutely 100%, and I would put it right here, right off of the alternator. I would run a fuse link, just like they did to that starter, and I would never even worry about it. It would be good to go. But also keep in mind, you do not run a six gauge with 150. Uh, we'll do 100 amp. I have a 100 amp alternator upgrade video. Go check that out. So now we have the negative battery cables. I don't know why so many people think the alternator is grounded. There are no grounds run to this. I'm sure on some vehicles they are. That's part of the big three, big four upgrade. On GM, Jeep, I've never seen a ground at the alternator. Let me know if some vehicle does, in fact, ground to the alternator. On this Jeep, we had two six gauge wires coming out of the negative terminal. One of them in the video you see, go to the firewall and one to the engine block. And I'm making this video because I don't want you to think I'm being rude when I tell you get off your butt and go pop the hood on your car. I'm being dead serious. I just did it to this Jeep for this video. Honestly, I did not know that fuse link was to the starter. I thought that fuse link was actually to the alternator. So getting off my butt, observing what's under there, I'm able to make a picture diagram of my vehicle. And then you can study this when you're bored and figure out what you want to improve on your system or maybe where you do want to fuse. You get the gauge of the wire, so whenever you're buying your parts, you know exactly what you need, and this is how you do it. So if I wanted to upgrade the Jeep wiring, and let's say that I wanted to put a 100 amp alternator on there, you clearly see what we changed. We need a fuse link or a fuse right there on the alternator. So there you go. That's a plan you need to make when you're doing a project no matter what. So we don't fuse any of the negative wires, ground wires ever. Don't ever do that dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. So remember we said all these were inside the car and have to be fused. Well, let's pay attention to how this is wired up. So we have a six gauge wire straight off the battery. No fuses at all going straight to the fuse box. We don't need any fuses on this line because everything that's in here is going to be fused in the fuse box. That's why it's a fuse box. So all you need to know about these in case you never opened one up, it's just a long strip like that. And then these are your little circuits. However in the world they are in there, it does not matter. So let's just say we had cooling fans on here. We have a 20 amp and you know, it's got some kind of element in there like that. And I forgot to look at it on the Jeep, but we're just gonna call this the interior because we have another fuse box in the glove box of the Jeep. And let's just say this is a 30 amp and of course it's going to have a fatter element in there the bigger the fuse and then we might have a fuel pump in here maybe 15 amps 10 amps whatever and then on the jeep remember the big piece of conduit where this ran towards the firewall so so then for the interior we may have a 10 gauge wire fuel pump may have a 14 and then cooling fans maybe 12. So people ask me about wire sizes. You have to Google wiring charts. It will show you the correct size wire for the run of cable. You know, I get so irritated when people are like, oh, that's a 30 amps. You need a number 10 gauge wire, but at least run a number eight. And you see I got a 10 gauge wire. Well, if you look at the chart, it depends on the run of the cable. So is your chart based on 50 feet or 60 feet? Is it a residential wiring chart on vehicles? That's why you will see 30 amp fuses sometimes running 14 gauge wire because it's only three or four feet on the cooling fans under the hood in here with some relays or whatever. So whatever your project is, look up wiring charts, amp gauge charts, whatever is gonna give you the proper size wire for the run of cable. All these are probably five or six feet. So they are using the ideal size, not big, not little, just the recommended size and these charts are usually based on somewhere around 10 feet for automotive wiring so this is our under hood fuse box and that's why it's got a big fat six gauge wire going to it and then we have this one going back to the glove box of our car and that's why it's ran on 10 gauge because this one is only for our tail lights brake lights radio cigarette lighter all the stuff inside the vehicle so on the jeep wrangler straight off the battery no fuse it goes through one fuse back to the inside of the Jeep under the dash or behind the glove box where it has the panel with the little fuses we've seen earlier. So everything inside the Jeep body, not fused here, fused once and then fused again. So you got double protection for everything inside the Jeep body. You see that in my videos, I don't forget the fuses 
It's just maybe some people don't know where they are. And everything inside the vehicle has to be fused no matter what. It depends how nice your car is. So fuse what you want. I just wanted to show you what the factory fuses. Really nothing under the hood of steel cars. And everything is extra protected inside. Well, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.